Hey, what's up? Liron here. In this video, we're going to learn how to simplify the background. That's going to be the focus of today. I'm going to paint this beautiful uh, boat scene and we'll focus on how you turn a very complex uh, de and detailed area into this beautiful simplicity. So let's take it to the table and get started. So let's get started. Background first. And again, the emphasis is on simplifying. So horizon line is going to be somewhere in the top third of the scene and then we have this line I just want to use it as a guideline to figure out where I'm gonna place the boats okay now as I mentioned the background is gonna be fully abstracted uh, and simplified so what we have to figure out is a drawing that will support that this is really important your drawing has a huge influence on how loose you allow yourself to paint afterwards sorry about the car horns <laughs> That's part of living in the city. So you see my background here is going to really support a simple sketch. I'm, I'm doing it in a way that will almost encourage me to barely put in any details there. So a couple of highlights here and there, a couple of windows, a couple of walls, but that's mainly it. That's the uh, lower part where the dock is actually placed and then we're starting to work our way through the middle ground so the middle ground we don't have too much going on there actually just a couple of boats so I'm gonna place them here uh, there's gonna be one around this section and I'm just putting in boats I'm not even I barely base it off of something that I see really um, I'm just trying to get a couple of interesting shapes in there and hopefully they'll read nicely and as boats, okay? I do like the idea of having the boat cut through and get to uh, the background, the dark background, the light boat, okay? So I'm also gonna put in maybe a mast or two. Hopefully that makes sense. And then we have a couple of boats here. They're gonna be quite a part of the background to the most, uh, to the mostly, but uh, let's put just some of them here and there. And that's our middle ground. That's what's going to connect the background with the foreground, believe it or not. It's that simple. And now for the boats that are closer to us, we have this one on the left. Our focus here is really, I want to show you how to simplify the background. Um, because a lot of people wonder, I just sketched the outline. Okay, that's what I did to simplify for now. And, and in a moment, I'm going to show you what it means for the, the painting stage itself. Uh, but in any case... Uh, we're gonna blast through this part. Here is the body of the boat, you know, the hull, whatever you call it, the reflection. There's obviously a rope here connecting it to something. The other side of that boat, we have this uh, cabin or, you know, the small room. I'm hopeless with the names of things. So as always, you'll let me know in the comments. And then we have this I guess the radar or sonar system and here we go rope that connects it to the dock on the right we have another boat here just like that notice how simple my drawing is this kind of a simple drawing will encourage you to just do whatever you want when you paint okay and, and force yourself sometimes to even on purpose try and do a, an oversimplified drawing uh, especially if you're in the habit of trying to be too perfect with everything you do. Here's this boat, I'm going to make it a little smaller and less important, because there's three of them already. I could have rotated one of them, but you know what, let's keep this simple. These are also anchored, so a couple of ropes running around. Maybe a bit of a mast here, something like that. This one has this kind of a thing. And this is really it. Now let's get to painting. So what I have in mind for this scene is, is fairly simple. Uh, I have my palette here. This is my Paul Rubens uh, paints. And um, I'm gonna use them very freely. With this palette, what I love is that it encourages me to just think about the temperature and nothing else. Uh, because I have so many different versions of yellows and, and blues and reds. So here we go. I'm just gonna put in some yellows. I'm, I'm going on purpose a bit less structured here because I really want to show you how much freedom you can have. Now I'm going to start putting in some blue. So that blue just comes between the yellows and oranges I put. And you see how that already creates an interesting atmosphere uh, for the scene. I'm going to try and close off all of these white gaps because I'm starting to not like them recently. Uh, so here we go. 
and then you get a sky that's fairly interesting. You can also add a bit of red to that, and then we'll have all of our primary colors present, and uh, I love to do that kind of thing. I don't know why, <laughs> I always like that. Now for the water, I want them to be a fairly muted blue, uh, and I will leave some highlights on some objects, not everything. I'm, I'm gonna use it very sparingly, okay, just for some boats here. Um, like so, light kind of comes to from the right, so here we go, cutting through that boat. I didn't leave any highlights for the background, okay, I'm gonna leave it um, with the initial wash, but I do leave highlights on these boats because they're closer, they, they're just closer to us, they're the middle ground. For the background I'm fine with not leaving any, you know, any highlights. Now as we move closer to our boats, we need to really start figuring out uh, the highlights for them. So I'm, I'm increasing the blue just a bit and a bit more yellow just to get this to be a little more, I don't know, watery and going above these top parts oop, covered a highlight but that's fine bit of a highlight here um, moving around the boats now here I do want this one to be uh, the most impactful and imparting boat so I'll have to do something interesting for that so let's use a bit of red for the body of the boat and notice how because I'm using such wet washes I don't have to worry that much about a part of it drying or you know uh, any of that stuff uh, because I'm using very uh, wet brush strokes I will leave this thing here as a highlight kind of blew it with the roof but that's fine now we're gonna deal with it I'm gonna go through this part this part's gonna be in the shadow this part of the boat is also in the shadow. There are the windows here, let's put them in. I really wanna show you how you can not worry too much about the accuracy, really. Um, a bit of a highlight here, but not too much, because that boat, I wanna stay there in the background. Let's add a bit of yellow to this one. This is going to be a significant boat, so I do want that to show. We're gonna let this merge into the water, which is a beautiful part of how I like to do it, mute this one up, and cover everything up, like so. It's all gonna end up being super light anyway, um, due to the, you know, wash uh, being very wet, so I don't have to worry too much at this stage, but I do have the opportunity to do some wet and wet here, so I could start adding in some more details, if I want to, you don't have to. Um, I do want to strengthen perhaps the bottom part here, maybe even the top, you know what, let's do this kind of a thing. I don't know how much of it will show in the end product, but that's fine. And then cover this up a bit too. Um, now I think I'll let this dry, I don't, I don't see any reason to add more details here. Uh, I could do something interesting, I don't know if it'll work, that's kind of a, a bet or a guess. But let's try this wet and wet. Just a line here. I don't know. We'll see how that ends up. Uh, so now I'm gonna let it dry and come back later. So everything is dry now and I'm gonna start working on the background. Now one big mistake I see so many people make is they don't have clear large shapes. Um, especially when it comes to the background, it's kind of a mix of so many elements and sometimes there are white gaps between them and it's just not clear enough so what I want to encourage you to try is to have some unity in the background so I'm just gonna get started left to right um, I don't know exactly what I'll get but I'm using a fairly light value fairly uh, muted also and what I want to do too much water on the brush I'm just gonna wipe some of that off okay because that hurts my control I'm just gonna start putting in the background while leaving a couple of white gaps. Now why white gaps? Because that's how I see them actually. When I look at the, the background I see a, a lot of dark areas and then some lighter areas between them. So that's the kind of thing I want to preserve and that's what I'll aim for. But it's all going to be very well connected. I'm not going to have any part that's uh, just floating somewhere there or you know it's all gonna have a purpose and it's all going to have some kind of a significance okay so that's the, the main thing I guess you want to 
pay attention to when it comes to that. The background has to make sense and be um, even to some extent. Now I can vary this mix. I don't have to go with you know purely just one value and uh, one color. In fact, it's to my benefit to vary it. So I'm adding more reds and more uh, blues and yellows as I move along. Okay, you see I'm varying my wash. And this makes a perfect uh, rooftop, for example, here. You can actually almost tell what you're looking at without anything being there, but it's also one big lump of something. Okay, it's not fragmented, it makes sense, uh, and that's what I'm after, okay? Um, this ability to render things fairly in a, in a fairly convincing manner is a skill. Okay, so don't worry if you're trying but it doesn't make sense or you don't get the result you want. It actually takes time to be able to do what I'm doing right now. And, and I'm not even the best at it, but uh, it is something I'm, I'm familiar with and I know how to uh, do quite well, I think. So, too much water. Um, I will add some hints at the bottom here for the dock. Now notice how I'm not big on really mentioning all the colors I'm using and all the combinations because it's quite random and, and I just choose a couple of colors uh, that I love and, and I use them but I'm basically using, I don't know, some kind of a um, um, an ochre and a normal like perlin red and then a phthalo-ish kind of blue but I'm not over complicating it beyond that. Here we go, roof and this section can kind of go to rest on the right side. And that's pretty much it. Now, if you want to add some resemblance of water, you could just wet this area like that. I will actually paint the boat, so I'm gonna add them in. That's a boat. Another one, I'm gonna do a little more, a little warmer, a little more in red. That's another boat. And then a muted one, another one here. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna let this kind of, I don't have the paper at an angle, but I do uh, allow it to look like reflections, okay? I'm gonna add some of the poles of the dock to the background as well. I didn't add them on time, but that's fine. And a bit of a muted, I guess, reflection to the left, like so. And this really makes sense as a background, okay? It doesn't have to be perfect, but it will work. Then we have this boat that's kind of um, closer to us. I'm gonna have that be a little more, a little stronger. <laughs> this part that's supposedly in the shadow, I'm gonna do like this. Then we have another boat right around here and the reflections. This time are gonna be a little stronger, but just a little bit. It's still quite in the background, okay? And notice how I'm barely doing any wet and wet here. I don't feel the need to. Let's make this a little longer. I don't feel the need to do any wet and wet really uh, because it'll just work the way it is. Uh, I could try and darken the water from this point downwards. If you want to, you could also rotate uh, the paper and I'm really you know what I'm gonna leave it as is if, if it's not gonna be the perfect most perfect uh, impression I'm fine with that but I do want to be able to show some highlights in the water you know what no let's leave it as is I'm just gonna try and, and we'll, we'll just go for it so the shadowy part of this boat here is really dark as you can see so I'm gonna try and create that it's almost black but I'm not going fully black because I do want some color to show. I like that some color does show. And then I'm going to grab a bit of red. I'm just going to go for it like so. See? And um, let's see what else. Let's grab a bit of lighter red, but still we're going to darken the boat compared to the water. And as you can see, I changed quite a lot, so I don't really know if it'll work perfectly, but I'm just going for it. I'm gonna leave the white stripe down the bottom. I really love the way it looks. So here we go, almost lost it. <laughs> and then we're gonna connect it to the water and add a reflection. Very simple reflection here. Uh, like that. 
and then we have to add the, the dark part of the reflection so that's gonna be to the right like this and the, the simpler you can keep it the better okay I'm gonna darken right under the very bottom of the boat here hopefully that makes sense it's not gonna be perfect but I think it's a good interesting impression plus notice how I treated the background it just makes so much sense to do it that way simplified very easy to handle and then let's move it a bit to the right like so at this stage I don't have a lot to say I'm just looking at the reference and figuring out what I'm looking at trying to build it up slowly um, so here the, the roof of that boat if you will goes like this and then we have the the two dark windows at the front so let's do those and I'm still not going fully dark and my Mac of course goes to sleep <laughs> on me uh, I have the reference photo there and by the way obviously I will link it in the description box uh, below and also we have this window to the other side it goes kind of like this here we go, like that, uh, this part I'm gonna leave I think light, let's move on to the next one. So here we also have quite a light area but we do have two windows, so one, two, and uh, this part, I'm gonna keep it more muted here, just to balance it out with this one but I will really emphasize the uh, yellow here, okay. So here we go. The beautiful part about watercolor is that you don't have any idea exactly what the result is going to be like unless it's a scene you're very familiar with and you painted multiple times. Unless that's the case you won't really know what you're going to end up with. And that's the mystery and that's the, the challenge. Um, but yeah, so here we go. As dark as I can get it with the yellow which isn't too dark as you can see here. But I'm doing my best um, and into that I can inject some other colors and that'll darken it while maintaining a relative warmth I guess. Now a bit more blue and I'm gonna take care of this line right here and this boat I will uh, add a couple of these you know creases alongside it. I don't know what you'd call these but what's the professional name but uh, I see them there and then I'm gonna have a bit of a yellow reflection right around here. That's gonna get significantly darker on the other side like that. Let's darken the whole thing up just a bit. And that's another boat and hopefully that makes some sense. I know it's not perfect but yeah. The, the last boat it's gonna be fully muted so I don't wanna uh, overemphasize it so here we go just a bit of a gray for it and it's funny I think I'll just keep this uh, painting in its uh, light state just like that I barely planned it I barely did any uh, preparation for it so it's, it's not gonna be the most planned piece but I think it does show how easy it can be to approach the background which is what I wanted here. Now let's just add a bit of darkness near the bottom of these two boats so that's one and that's two a little stronger there's a lot of water on paper so you have to negate it. Uh, so here we go like this we have the dock on the right here and I'm still considering um, doing what I said with the, let's connect this shadow here uh, doing what I said with the uh, darkening the water a bit. We'll see about that. I actually like the idea of keeping this fairly light so I don't know. Well, you know what, it's, it looks good. I wouldn't touch it too much. I'll just add a couple of details uh, once this layer dries. But before this even dries I do want to make some connections with the ropes and everything. So I'm just gonna go for it. One, two, three. These ropes are gonna play a really nice role compositionally and just merging areas. Okay, so that's what we're going for. Like this, we have this rope here that I didn't even get in, another one here perhaps, another one here. 
like so. And I hope that makes sense. Especially I want you to look at the background. This is beautiful in my opinion. Let me show it to you up close. So here we go. You see the background speaks volumes without really showing anything, okay? And you saw how quick uh, I was with this section too. Now let's let it dry. I'm gonna add just a couple of touches um, once it dries and just to bring out some elements of the painting. So here we go. This one's fully dry now. I'm at a point where Usually I will add more details to it, but I kind of like the idea of leaving this rather simplified. So what we're gonna do, because yesterday I worked on that highly uh, realistic uh, painting of myself, the self-portrait, today I wanna keep it simplified. So what we'll do is just a couple of strategic shadows, okay? Now, if I wanted to darken the water and increase the contrast with the boats, which would make sense to some extent, I'll then have to darken the background too. I don't wanna go down that route, even though it would have produced maybe a result that's a little more accurate or a little better in some people's opinion. I actually want to stop here. Okay, so what I will do again is just a couple of strategic shadows. So let's start here. There's a very strong shadow that I do see under this rooftop that I want to bring out. And generally, this frame does have a couple of darker areas in it that I think are worth emphasizing. A couple of these, uh, also under this section uh, here. I will need some lines to preserve the shape of the boat. So something like that. Under this area I could add this kind of a thing. This actually makes no sense. I don't know why I did it that way. Let's get rid of that. Uh, all I have to really do is uh, finish the hull of the boat and add a bit of this. And here we're done. We're, we got rid of that. It's not perfect, but it will work. Um, next up we have this area, fairly dark too. Uh, also down here inside the windows. This thing is really in the shadow. This has some fairly dark shadows within. Um, we have a couple of these things that pop out. I don't know exactly what they are. And we do obviously have that thing I'll add later on with a white pen perhaps. Um, there's a bunch of little details on the boat and I'm just considering what do I want to add, what do I want to keep out. This I'm going to darken and I do want to add some blue. Feels like there isn't enough blue in the foreground so I'm going to add a fairly light in the background, sorry. Uh, uh, sorry, no, I meant foreground. Why, why am I correcting myself for no reason? Uh, so I will use a bit of blue for this boat here just to keep things a little balanced. Obviously, the right sides of the boats are darker. But I will leave this one, I'll leave as it is. And this one, I'll be very careful when darkening it. Okay, I do want to preserve some of that. There is a natural um, beauty in not going too far with the shadows. Just to keep the paper's transparency and all of that. There's a bit of shadow here, here, there some stronger ropes but isn't really a must a bit of shadow here um, I'm considering if I want to darken some things in the background maybe just here and there like that just to make it clearer what we're looking at but we're not gonna need much really I think this is good this is a good uh, spot to I'm gonna bring the white pen um, but this is really a good spot to stop <laughs> really uh, I'm gonna add a bit of white here with these things there isn't something too dark to contrast with it in the background so it's not really that important too but I, I can use this stage just just to fix some highlights that I perhaps lost so you see me adding here and there patching up some some shapes there's actually a seagull here so I'm just gonna add it just chilling on the boat that's funny um, this I'll leave out, I don't need it. Maybe just around here. Bit of a highlight around here too. These have a bit of highlights on them, so like that. But that's pretty much it. I just want to add some for the ropes. And... I think really we're done, I don't want to overdo it. 
so I hope you enjoyed this uh, demo. The main idea was to uh, simplify the background. I wouldn't say I'm fully satisfied with the end result as it is, um, but it is sometimes nice to just dive in, paint what you see and hope for the best. And if you're lucky and if you're concentrated enough and if you click with the reference, you will get something that uh, resembles it. And again, I needed some break after the, some highly uh, realistic uh, works I made. So this is a great way of loosening up. This is really the type of work you'd see me produce more when I do plein airs, uh, which is really nice. It's, it's a nice little uh, thing to do. I can add just a couple of, I forgot completely about the masts here. And then you can make some of them be a little dark. So you just go like, this, have them in the background, but I love how the background is really kind of misty and loose and beautiful. Let me show it to you once again up close before we uh, wrap up this video. I hope you like it and now truly let's wrap it up. So this is it for this demo. As you can see, some of it I can explain in words and verbalize, some of it I can't really, but for the most part you want a drawing that supports simplified painting and then you want to look at the shape you want to recognize the values and then go pretty light pretty muted keep it in the background not too vibrant colors and then leave these nice little interesting gaps now again leaving these gaps is a skill it's something you have to practice multiple times but once you get it you get it okay don't be too hard on yourself it takes time to develop that visual language it is just what it is literally literally it's it's a visual language and how you convey what you see again this is a very typical work you'd see of me uh, if I do a plain air for example so I love that it has that freshness so I do want to add uh, if you want to learn how to paint very loosely and fun like that be sure to check out my frustration free watercolor course link in the description box below if you're more into drawing I'm going to put a link to my drawing course as well and I'll also link down below my new book on sketching people paper book, paperback version is going to be out really soon I really really appreciate it a lot of people have gotten the have got the um, the frustration free watercolor course the feedback is great I am so grateful if you got it Thank you so much. If you just watch the videos and comment and like and whatever, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And I will see you again in the next one. <laughs>